Recombinant DNA technology basically gives us the ability to modify and change pre-existing genes. And by changing the sequences of nucleotides in the pre-existing gene, we can in turn change what the sequence of amino acids is in the protein that is produced by that gene. And in certain cases, by changing the sequence of amino acids, we create brand new proteins that contain brand new functions. So we see that recombinant DNA technology makes it possible to produce brand new proteins that have never been produced before, that contain brand new structures and have their own unique function. And we can do this by basically modifying the pre-existing genes by changing the nucleotide sequence in those genes that encode for certain proteins. Now, there are three types of modifications that we can commonly make to our gene. We can modify the gene by deleting a segment of DNA in that gene. We can modify a gene by inserting a segment into that gene, or we can modify it by substitution. Now, in this lecture, we're going to focus on deletions and insertions. In the next lecture, we're going to discuss substitutions. So let's begin with deletions. Now, deletions can be broken down into two categories. We can delete very large segments of the gene or we can delete smaller segments of the gene. And these two categories basically require slightly different methods. So let's begin with method number one by which we essentially modify our plasmid by removing a large segment of DNA from that plasmid. And the way that we carry out this process is so we take our plasmid, so remember the plasmid is this circular double-stranded DNA molecule. And let's suppose we want to delete, we want to remove this entire chunk of DNA shown by purple. So to remove this, all we really have to do is take those specific restriction enzymes that cleave at this position and this position, we mix it with this plasmid molecule that basically cleaves, removes this unwanted section, and then we can essentially purify and remove that unwanted section by some type of process, for example, gel electrophoresis, and then we can add a DNA ligase molecule, which will use ATP to basically create that phosphodiester bond between this end and this end. So at the end, we produce this new synthesized plasmid in which we removed, we deleted a large chunk of that DNA molecule as shown in this diagram. So we essentially removed this purple section from that plasmid. And now we can basically take the plasmid, place it into our bacterial cell, and that bacterial cell can synthesize the gene that the plasmid actually codes for. Now, let's suppose instead of removing a large segment of that gene, a large segment of this plasmid, we want to remove a much smaller segment as shown in the following diagram. So instead of removing this segment, we only want to remove this small segment. Well, the way that we carry out this process is almost like this process, but it, it, it has a slightly different case. So what we have to use is something called an exonuclease. So we take our restriction enzyme and in step one, we basically add the restriction enzyme that also cleaves on this side and this side. And so at the end, we basically produce the following linear DNA molecule. And on both ends, we basically contain those green sections that we want to remove. So in the next step, we add a molecule we call an exonuclease. And what an exonuclease does is it essentially removes these tiny portions at the end. And once the exonuclease removes these two portions, we can remove that exonuclease, remove these two tiny portions, and then add DNA ligase to basically create that phosphodiester bond between these two ends that now don't have these green sections. And so now we contain this new DNA sequence, this new DNA.
that now contains this new DNA sequence and now we can add it into our bacterial cell and once again it can synthesize the protein that the plasmid actually codes for. So this is how we delete segments of DNA in our plasmid. Now what about if we want to insert a segment of DNA into our plasmid? How can we go about inserting DNA segments? Well once again let's suppose we have the following segment or the following plasmid. So on the plasmid we have this orange section that we essentially want to keep and we want to remove this brown section and then we want to insert a specific segment of DNA that we essentially synthesized in the laboratory. Now the method that we're going to use is known as the cassette mutagenesis method. So a procedure called cassette mutagenesis can be used to insert specific segments of DNA into the plasmid known as cassettes. So we essentially take our plasmid and as always we mix it with dige uh, we mix it with our restriction enzymes and these restriction enzymes basically cleave at position 1 at pos and position 2 so we basically produce these two fragments that differ by size and because they differ by size and because we want to remove this fragment here we can use some type of purification method for example gel electrophoresis to remove this molecule here here. And so after the purification method, we have this molecule and now we can place our cassette, that newly synthesized DNA molecule that was created in the laboratory, we can basically make it in such a way that the ends contain these sticky ends, complementary ends, which can stick to the end of, the, of, of this initial orange strand of DNA. And so now we mix it in the presence of once again DNA ligase and the ligase will basically combine the complementary sequences of these two ends to these two ends and we form the following newly synthesized plasmid that contains this insertion, this cassette. And now we can use this plasmid, place it inside a cell and the cell can basically synthesize the protein that corresponds to the DNA sequence in this particular plasmid. Now, the final type of modification method is known as a base pair substitution, and we'll talk about that in the next lecture.